The Millennium Challenge Corporation, or simply MCC, is a bilateral U.S. aid agency set up to help poor and developing countries in their development. MCC has lately caught a serious controversy in Nepal, with a section of leaders of ruling party arguing that there are many smaller agreements within the MCC. The fate of the U.S. $500 million grant to Nepal by the U.S. MCC has been thrown into controversy after top brass in the ruling Nepal Communist Party came out against it. The opponents inside and outside the ruling party argue that the U.S. is trying to foist its hidden geopolitical agenda on Nepal through the grant in an apparent bid to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. The U.S. government will release the fund only after Nepal's parliament approves the bill. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli is determined to approve the bill related to the compact in an parliament at all costs, but he lacks the necessary support in the parties. Many others in the parties have urged for a revision before the endorsement, citing some of the provisions are against national interest. As per the policy of MCC, the country has already set up the Millennium Challenge account, or MCA Nepal, which is responsible for managing and implementing the projects under MCC. The projects under the MCC have a budget of US dollar 630 million, out of which the country is receiving US dollar 500 million under MCC. The grant is the biggest ever the country will receive from the USA. As per the deal, the funds will be spent on setting up a 400 kV transmission line running 400 kilometers on the Lopsi Fedi Galchi Tamauli Sunawal Power Corridor. The funds will be also be used to set up three substations in route to infrastructure that will connect to the cross-border transmission line with India and Rupandehi. Some $130 million under the MCC compact will go towards the maintenance of around 300 km of roads on the east-west highway. The compact's contested clause have raised the eyebrow of many. It says this compact upon entry into force will prevail over the domestic laws of Nepal. The MCC gets the upper hand regarding intellectual property rights, procurement, payment of tax, liability or loss of its property, auditing and suspension of the project, among others. There is a suspicion that MCC projects are handled by US companies only. They also argue that the USA is planning to set up military base in the country in the name of projecting the projects under the MCC and the troops so stationed here will not go back even after the projects are completed. There are many protests in Kathmandu against MCC. Even during the lockdown period, people came to the streets and protested saying that MCC is totally against the sovereignty. Some provisions in the pact place it above Nepal's law. Many people think endorsement will compromise Nepal's sovereignty and violate the country's non-alignment policy. Some analysts have sharply commented that this agreement is a ploy to keep Nepal under US law indefinitely, although the MCC agreement must be implemented within five years of being approved by the parliament. Various points of the MCC agreement are against the sovereignty of the states of Nepal, security law and the supremacy of the people. The rights that are sought to be given above the existing law and justice system of Nepal will have the adverse effect. In the agreement, US policy and law are considered above Nepal's constitution and policy and law. MCC is an instrument of a new type imperialism pursuing economic hegemony over poorer countries. For example, in Madagascar, MCC funded land reforms resulted in 1.3 million hectares of farmland being le leased free of charge to foreign private company for 99 years to export produce as a clause and provision in the MCC compact are not subjected to Madagascar law. In other words, national sovereignty, security, and policies have been sold out. Sri Lanka was happy first, but ultimately has to reject MCC. MCC claimed the deal would benefit 54% of Sri Lankan's population as these investments will reduce severe traffic bottleneck, create safer, more reliable public transportation, and lower the transport costs required to connect people and goods with booming market. But the MCC and United States government or any current or former officer or employee of MCC or the United States shall be immune from the jurisdiction of all courts 
and tribunals of Sri Lankan for any claim or loss arising out of activities or omission under this compact. It was a poison pill and it caused a stir in Sri Lanka. The MCC contract annexes on the transport sector propose a heavy surveillance regime with the extensive CCTV monitoring equipment, facial recognition software, geographical mapping and much more. Such surveillance mechanism impines on the privacy of citizens. Furthermore, the involvement of a foreign state in recommending and implementing this surveillance regime is a cause for concern. Strategically, sensitive geographical information should be under the supervision of the Ministry of Defense and the survey department and not under the private or foreign firms. Talking about Nepal, in section 3.2, under government responsibilities, it states that the government has the principal responsibility for overseeing and managing the implementation of the program. But at the bottom, it gives all this responsibility to MCA. In section 3.6, under procurement and grants, it states that the government will ensure that the procurement of all goods, work, and service by the government or any provider to implement the program will be in accordance with MCC's program procurement guidelines. But what is the guarantee that MCA Nepal will be loyal and honest to Nepal government and will not do any corruption? In the section 3.8 under audits review, it says audits are conducted by an independent auditor approved by MCC. If the government wishes to audit the program project, it may use an American auditor or a local auditor only with prior approval from the MCC. This means that the entire right of audit will co be completely under the control of the MCC. This is a clear violation of the rights of government to independently audit any project, company or in any organization in Nepal and a violation of the right of government of Nepal is a violation of the sovereignty of the country. For hiring the employees as well, it does not mention anything in 2017 compact. But in 2019, in section 1.3, under MCA hiring practice, it states MCA Nepal will hire all officers and employees through fair, competitive and non-discriminatory procedure. Officers and employees will be hired without regard to nationality or citizenship. So the employee must not need to be necessary in Nepal. So the compact made in 2019 has added lots of additional things and has not yet been ratified. In section 6.8, under MCC status, it states that MCC or United States government will be immune from the jurisdiction of all the courts and tribunals of Nepal for any claim or loss arising out of activities or omission under this compact. MCC and the United States government assume no liability for any claims or loss arising out of activities or omissions under this compact. The government waives any and all claims against MCC or the United States government or any current or former officers or employees of the MCC or the United States government for all loss, damage, injury or date arising out of activities or omissions under this compact and agrees that it will not bring any claim or legal proceeding of any kind against any of the above entities or person for any such loss damage, injury or death. This is a direct violation of Nepal's sovereignty and constitution. Under section 7.1, it states that the compact, upon entry into force, will prevail over the domestic laws of Nepal. Such an agreement would be tantamount to handing over Nepal's confidence, self-respect and sovereignty to MCC, ultimately to United States. If any other law of Nepal is in conflict with the MCC agreement, this agreement will come into force. In Annex 3 under 2.A under Electricity Transmission Project, it states that MCC can promote the safe operation of the grid. The agreement does not say that US troops will come to Nepal directly, but in the name of security, the MCC will be able to use any level of American security personnel as needed. After the implementation of the agreement, the government of Nepal will not be able to counter it later. It should be clearly stated that Nepali security personnel will be used in whatever security is required under this project. MCA Nepal has a right to settle issue in its own without the support or consent of any other party in a fully autonomous manner. Based on this, it can enter into agreement with any other organization for the security of the project 
or other matters without consulting the government of Nepal. Nepal and the US are old friends. The US has been cooperating with Nepal in diverse areas such as economy, trade, education, culture, and public administration. The MCC issue must not get in the way of straining bilateral ties. Therefore, it should be clearly stated in the agreement that the law and justice system of the country should be supreme in all respects. It should be clearly stated that Nepali security personnel will be used in whatever security is required under this project. It should be clearly stated that the government of Nepal does not require any prior approval to conduct an audit of MCC or MCA Nepal at any time. Nepal will not be rich by selling electricity, but by consuming electricity. If the grant is to be taken, unconditional grant can be accepted. The other sensitivity to Nepal is that the transmission line linked to India could make Nepal even more dependent on its southern neighbor. No aid comes without strings attached. But the Nepal government should be clever enough to use aids like this for its own benefit. The MCC compact requires Nepal to build a transmission line connecting Bhutpal in Nepal with Gorakhpur in India. This is intended to enable exports of Nepal's power to India. Such cross-border transmission lines connects the two power markets. It opens electricity trade for both countries. While Nepal can access India's power market, India can also access Nepal's. Unless Nepal sells its electricity dirt cheap, practically free, there is no way Nepal's power can compete on the price against India. No matter whether it is the wet or dry season, Nepali power will almost always be more expensive than that in India. However, in the current situation, looking at the terms of the agreement, it is not a grant but a debt trap, which is not accepted for any self-respecting Nepali. Although the MCA presents an inciting opportunity, there are also important risks. MCA Nepal should work for the government of Nepal, not as a government itself. MCC, since its initiation in 2004, has signed 37 compacts. In Madagascar, MCC funded land reforms resulted in 1.3 million hectares or half of Madagascar's arable land being leased free of charge to foreign private company for 99 years for export agriculture. In Ghana, MCC grants to the energy sector resulted in the reforms that privatized one of the largest state-owned electricity provider. In Honduras, MCC funded continued months after an illegal right-wing coup providing funding and legitimacy to an undemocratic regime. As there is overwhelming evidence of the negative consequence of MCC experiments in other countries, we recommend that Nepal avoid making the same mistake. The American ambassador says, if Nepal rejects the grant, it will go to some other country and Nepal will lose out. If so, why is the US so insistent that Nepal accept the grant? The another question is, did Nepali government ask the areas where it wanted an assistance from MCC? Or did the MCC design it and decide themselves as where they want to give grants to Nepal? Nepal is full of priority needs. The US government may break off the deal at once convenience, not less than the government of Nepal cannot. Finally, no country can be reached through foreign aids. The most dangerous element is control. The compact not only gives a foreign government absolute access to data that could be sensitive, but it is full of clause which in effect force Nepal to submit to US. The MCC compact will be governed by the international law. Wow! A supposedly Nepali project designed and run by Nepali for the benefits of Nepali and funded by grant, not a loan, cannot be governed by Nepal's law? Naturally. Any disagreement by any government will be sorted out in international court. Need we say we would be severely handicapped in this regard? We should not lull into complacency by the statement issued by the politicians during an election campaign where anything and everything can be promised only to be forgotten or rubbish later. This means that Nepali will be bounded by the agreements allowing the US to operate in the country without any objection from the government. It can also lead to economic and political instability in the country. The project has been designed by the MCC and it will be implemented under the authority of MCC. This grant is not directly available to the country, 
but it is used to cover the expenses of the projects. Since the Nepal government does not have any control of the project, the MCC can make change to the plans as they wish. It is becoming clear that the US interest in Asian region is growing since the beginning of this decade. It is primarily due to the changing geopolitical situation in the region. The rise of China as a superpower within a period of less than 50 years is the biggest threat to the US. The expansion of Chinese power, especially in the Asian region, is the main reason that US wants to have some control in this region. For US, Nepal is an ideal place because of its location and its instability due to various problems such as weak government, stagnant economy, communal problem, debt crisis, and corruption. These make Nepal easily accessible to the US. No matter how much grant Nepal is receiving, all the amounts will be finished in the corruption by some politicians. The Nepalese citizens are the ones who will be victimized.